Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Roving Report, the weekly programme where we shine a spotlight on an area of the world that's been in the news. Well this week we turn our attention to the island nation of Evernamed, where thousands of police officers from the European Union and its partnering countries are arriving to try and restore peace and stability to the country. Our special correspondent, Etelie George, has this report. Well, Steve, located in the North Sea between the United Kingdom and the Netherlands, the island nation of Evernamed is a former English colony, which until recently was largely ignored by the rest of the world. Severe floodings long blighted life in the low-lying country. In 1780, a tidal surge in fact killed more than 2,000 English people there, causing most of the population to flee, leaving only a handful of farmers behind. It was only when the first Dutch settlers arrived in the early 1800s that the flooding problem was recognised. Dikes were built to protect against the sea, allowing the island to develop. Basically, agriculture flourished and the islanders were able to develop a more permanent infrastructure. Then, at the outbreak of the First World War, Evername declared independence from the Netherlands, but despite remaining neutral throughout, still suffered severe economic difficulties as a result of the conflict. Much the same happened during the Second World War as well. But at the end of the war, by 1947, the economic fortunes of the country began to look up when the first gas field was found in the Groningen district. But despite the outward appearance of prosperity, there was still huge dissatisfaction among the islanders as many failed to benefit from this discovery. Consequently, a bloody civil war broke out in 1955. Now that raged for three years until 1958, when a new government, led by Hans Tolstra, was installed. However, peace, Steve, did come at a price. Tolstra headed a dictatorship which ruled the island with an iron fist through the use of his feared EISA secret service. Many people subsequently disappeared, it's thought killed by the secret services. Corruption was rife. Critics accused the ever-named government of having an appalling human rights record. And by now, the economy at the island was almost broken, leaving thousands of people in poverty and suffering from starvation. Well, let's bring you to the present day. Ever Named is known for all the wrong reasons. Human trafficking is a huge problem. It's said that girls are regularly smuggled onto the island and forced to work in the red light districts. International observers also say domestic and sexual violence towards local women is a serious problem. The drug trade and the crime wave that goes with it is also now spiralling out of control. Well, the Tolstra regime tried unsuccessfully to negotiate with the European Union to try and improve the island's economic prospects. But Evernames poor human rights record and endemic corruption meant the regime's pleas fell on deaf ears and the EU refused to negotiate. Now, in 2010, Hans Tolstra stepped down. He handed power to his son, Peter, and that, quite frankly, had disastrous consequences. Even more corrupt than his father and more interested in partying and drugs than running the country, within months of him taking power, the economy of Evernamed finally completely collapsed. An increasingly frustrated population took to the streets, they held a series of demonstrations, and that resulted in a new temporary government being installed under the leadership of General Eric Leuven, who went on to organise democratic elections, and they took place in 2011. The Evernamed Welfare Party and the Evernamed Socialist Party won the elections. Carol Janssen of the EWP was installed as president, with Mark Guten from the ESP as his prime minister and Eric Leuven as minister of defence. Just as the country looked about to turn a corner, a massive storm surge swamped the island in 2012, and that left thousands of people homeless. While the United Nations launched a mission to help, IDP camps were set up in the north of the island. A major humanitarian effort was launched, with aid arriving in the ports of Delfsil and Harlingen. But not everyone welcomed this help. Now, the UN was accused of helping only the refugees and basically ignoring the plight of the rest of the population who were still struggling with high unemployment and the continuing economic downfall. Local tribes attacked UN convoys. They raided supply warehouses, piling misery upon misery. Matters were made worse as the island continued to be torn apart by fighting between 
the two main criminal families, the Tolstras, ancestors of the previously corrupt regime, and mafia-like Fenstra mob. The two families are battling to control the island's drug and prostitution trade, leading to crime spiralling even further out of control. Earlier this year, Chibi Fenstra disappeared. His car was found with the engine still running, sparking fears that he may have even been kidnapped, possibly by the Tolstra rivals. But no ransom demand has ever been made. Soon afterwards, another leading member of the Fenstra family was gunned down by a motorcyclist outside his home in Mannheiser. An apparent revenge attack followed, with a top Tolstra killed in a car bomb attack in Hroningen. All this as the badly equipped and poorly trained ever-named police struggle to cope with a series of demonstrations against the IDP problem and the economic situation. Western observers say the local force are overwhelmed and desperately need help to improve. Earlier this year, the situation became so unstable that the ever-named government appealed for international help from the United Nations and from the European Union. In March this year, the UN Security Council passed Resolution 0371, which authorised an EU police mission. During the past few days, thousands of police officers from across the European Union and partnering countries have arrived in Evernamed. Their mission? To assist the Evernamed government and local police to restore law and order. It's expected that they'll use their skills to help retrain local officers to create a fully functioning police service. That's it from me for now, Steve. It's back to you. Italy, thank you very much. Well, that's it for this week from Roving Report. Join us next week where we'll shine the spotlight on another part of the globe.